Many tennis players are of the belief that the only way to slice a backhand is by opening the racket face and then carving underneath the ball. While it is possible to hit a slice in this matter, it is not what we see at the professional level. High level tennis players will have a neutral racket face at contact. So in today's video, I'm going to show you why the neutral racket face is crucial and how you can use it to improve your backhand slice. First, let's examine how we achieve underspin on the ball. So on the backhand slice, if we open the racket face up, the ball will get underspin. So if I hit a ball with an open racket face, I will be able to get slice on it. However, if I hit the slice very hard, then the open racket face might cause the ball to stay up too high. A better way to create underspin on the backhand slice is by going high to low. So professional players will start with their take back around their shoulder height, in some cases even higher. And now the next step is going down towards the waist area. So it's this high uh, to low motion that creates underspin. And now the next thing that happens on the professional slices is that some players will keep their racket level as they go across the body and other players will have the tip of the racket uh, dip down a la Federer uh, when they slice. So what creates the underspin is this high to low motion. So if I go from a high position to a low position, I get underspin. And now the way you want to hit your slice is with a low trajectory. And this is where the closed racket face is crucial. You want to be able to hit a slice back end that doesn't bounce very high on the other side. And the other person would have to bend down and hopefully you can draw an error that way. And the best way to create that is with the neutral racket face at contact. And this is how you achieve the neutral racket face at contact. You're actually not going to be aware how the racket face is positioned when you hit the ball. There's too much acceleration in that part of the shot. So players are unaware how exactly their racket face is positioned. Of course, uh, they can feel it if they open the racket face way up, but they will not be able to differentiate between a racket face that's slightly open or completely neutral. So the only way to create this neutral racket face of contact, what you see from the professional players, is by changing your timing on the slice. And the way you're going to change your timing on the slice is by taking the ball later. Here's what happens if you take the ball too early on the slice. So if I have a continental grip and if I take the ball too early or too far in front of my body, it becomes very difficult to create the neutral position of the racket face. I would have to bend my wrist down in order to straighten my racket. Naturally, the further in front I go, the more the racket face opens up. In order to make good contact on the backhand slice, you must have the correct footwork. And what happens at the professional level is that you will rarely see an open stance slice backhand like this. Only in emergency situations will you ever see a player attempt a shot like this. Instead, players will step around with their dominant foot. So they will do a lateral step with their dominant leg and now automatically uh, the shoulders are turned and we have this sideways position. And now, when you make contact, you should never go past the tip of your front foot and you adjust the timing by waiting on the ball longer. So as you're stepping around with your dominant foot, you should never go past this point. And there are several advantages why you must make contact later. So if I make contact around the tip of my front foot, see naturally the racket face is more neutral. I don't even have to adjust it. It is very unlikely that the racket face will open up if I hit the ball this close to my body. On the other hand, if I go further out front, naturally the racket face opens up. So by waiting longer, uh, naturally uh, the racket face will be more neutral. Another advantage of waiting longer on a slice is that if I make contact around the tip of my front foot, uh, it's going to be easier for me to connect the slice to my body. So the further in front I go, I would lose the ball. It's very difficult to hit across with power. So if I wait longer and make contact later, now I can hit across and connect it to my back muscle. I can squeeze my shoulder blades together and I therefore get a lot more power on the ball. Something like this.
there are going to be exceptions on the open racket face. When we're talking about a chip return, for example, where we're not really swinging at the ball, we're just absorbing the pace, there, in fact, we can have a slightly more open racket face. Another example where the racket face would be more open would be on low slices. So the lower the ball goes, uh, the more you have to open the racket face uh, to make the ball go over the net. It would be very unlikely that you're going to make it over the net with a neutral racket face on a low slice. So if you want to hit hard, low slices that are going to be tough to handle for your opponent, you have to do three things. Number one, you have to make a lateral step. Number two, you have to go high to low. And number three, you have to wait for the ball and make a later contact. If you achieve that, you will be able to hit your slice intuitively with a more closed racket face and will be therefore not letting the slice sit up and you're going to hit it with a lower trajectory and it's going to be very difficult for your opponent to handle. Thank you guys for watching this video. Leave a comment in the section below. I'll be happy to respond. Hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you next time.